perfect. And we're finally back. It's been a while. We've been on a hiatus. It's been like a month, hasn't it? Yeah, pro- yeah, probably a month. Oh man, life happens. Yeah, I well, think Evan, Evan and his wife were out of the country for a while, and then we both teach band, and I've got school, and we both work, and stuff comes up. Yeah, me and my wife went to Ireland, which was awesome, bucket list trip, and then just teaching band and school and this on the weekend and that on the weekend and sorry dude can't make it to Louisville and you're like sorry I can't make it to Richmond it's like all right we'll, it we'll figure it but, out but but your band season's over now I've got one more weekend but I'll be done before we're ready to record number 10 so yeah just finished up last night last high school band show of the the year it was a good one though it's gotta so. feel like a weight off the shoulders all the free time that opens up yeah, I'll be able to get back into the gym regularly and it's always a good thing. also have weekends where I can hang out and do stuff again. <laughs> it's going to be glorious. So much time. So much time. Well, welcome everybody. Episode 9 of the Aged Out Podcast with your hosts Mike Fantini and Evan Worrell. And today I think we're just going to focus primarily on WGI. It's right around the corner, man. It's your favorite time of year. It is a fun time of year. Yes. Favorite I don't know. I I do like WGI more than DCI personally. That's As a, a performer, that is a I mistake. like it. That's a mistake. Uh, but we'll get into that some more here in a minute. Is are most groups auditions over at this point? Um, I'd say most of them probably are over or close to being over. I think most people have had a first audition, maybe not a second, because uh, we're still in October, and I don't think. I think Everybody. I've seen Facebook posts from like RCC and Pulse, like Pulse Snare Line 18, or 18, and like you see the eight or nine of them standing there. Same with RCC. I think they're done. Yeah, and actually I think I have seen some of the Rhythm X guys post on Facebook like the photo of the eight guys that are in yeah, the snare yeah. line or the four or five guys that are in the quad line. So I yeah. think they actually are marching eight snares, which is great because that's the perfect number for indoor in my opinion. How many snares did they have in 14? Was it nine? What eight? show was that? That was the Jagged Edge thing. Jagged Edge, they had eight. Oh, I was gonna, I was getting ready to say what happened last time they marched eight. Well, I, did, actually, I didn't really know because thirteen they had eight and they won a gold medal. I didn't really remember if they've had eight since then between then and now. But they had eight they last year. But coincidentally, the only two years that um, Rhythm X has ever won the performance caption, they had eight snares. Coincidence? Probably not. But they won. They won performance caption with eight snares, four quads, five bases in. 2013, the man in the arena show. Then they won performance caption, the music caption, the next year, the Jagged Edge year. And then they had 11 snares and they did not win the performance I was going to say, so, so, so what I'm hearing you say is it was not a good idea for them to go 11 that one winner in that door show, whatever the hell that show was called. Yeah, it it was cool, but maybe not the most, uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, so I think we'll start. Definitely did not lend itself to playing the cleanest possible. <laughs> no, not at all. Um so let's start and talk about last WGI season. Okay. Let's let's recap a little bit because I've told you before, and I've said on this on this show before, I'm not a huge fan of WGI. Like I really didn't follow the the competitive activity side of the activity last year. I wasn't teaching anywhere. I wasn't. I didn't go to any shows. So I was kind of out of the loop. But I've done my homework. I've gone back, watched a ton of videos from the end of last season. Kind of have a good idea of where every group ended up and have my opinions formed and. Yeah. So we'll go through that, and then we'll talk about what we liked and didn't like. Um, obviously, the Broken City left-hand pings. The we trendsetters. Will, we will cover the trendsetters. And then we'll go into anything we've known or heard or found out about this coming season so far. Yeah. And it's pretty early, so that segment will probably be pretty short, but we'll see where it takes us. For sure. So to start, <clears throat> I think the first group I checked out was Pulse. And my initial impression of Pulse last season was... Played their butts off. Always. Yeah, they're always one of the cleanest indoor groups. I mean, it, it, we'll talk about that Midwest versus California advantage that the West Coast groups have in the indoor activity from a weather standpoint. Yeah, they can play outside almost all season Yeah, I long. think Pulse and RCC rehearse outside every weekend. Unless it's raining, of course, or something like that. Yeah. Like, they have like they get, like, tennis courts and basketball courts they play the tarp out on, and they're, like, outside all the time. Well, even if they can't just, like, even if they can't lay the tarp out, outside they can at least warm up play show segments outside do body imitate the lot that sort of whole thing almost all season long versus the midwest groups 
Rhythm X, Matrix, the Michigan groups, all that stuff, and even the ones like up in the Northeast, mm-hmm. it's cold outside. Yeah, we man. used to always joke because finals week, Rhythm X goes to a park in Centerville, Ohio, and we just work got to rehearse outside because it's actually warm enough, like in the 60s usually, or excuse me, the high 50s. And we actually, we used to get exponentially better. We would improve more. Finals week magic. Yeah, it's the pixie dust we always call it. Like, it, we would exponentially improve in those four or five days before finals and championships. Then we had, we'd get, we'd get better in those four days than we had in the previous two months. Yeah. Without a doubt. For sure. You just, so, he, you so, just hear everything. So it makes perfect sense that Pulse and RCC and Broken City now, and honestly, Monarch Independent at this point, yeah. coming out of left field. Texas. Texas. Like, warm down there too. Warm all the time, so that's a little bit of an advantage they have, but you, nothing you can do about it really. Uh, Pulse played great. Um, just they, they're like the master. I feel like they pioneered bringing back the rough, like the open stroke drag. Yeah, I think they were one of the first groups that really started to play those a lot. They came out playing with space and very high sense of like touch and approach to the drum and just that sound quality at the low end of course rhythm x had the touch show but i think the west coast groups kind of trailblazed that and pulse in general trailblazed that mm-hmm. especially in 2010 and that's when everything changed man 2010 that, that, the game was a, changed. that was a turning point from the level of clarity in the indoor activity i feel like because when you can go back and gone, Rhythm X won a gold medal that year. They played very well, but they were not as clean as Pulse in 2010, I'd argue. Mm-mm. Rhythm X in 2009, that was a masterfully designed show. But you can ask anyone that was in that ensemble, they didn't play well. Yeah. They did not play that clean. 2010 is when it switched from not... Before 2010, you could design a really great show and play pretty well, like okay and win. But after that, it was... You're going to have to... Do both. Yep. Except for this. Which is honestly year. the way it well, we'll get to that <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll get there. But that's how it should be. You should have yeah. to have the whole package. Yeah. And uh, well, I'll save that. Uh so what do you think of RC of Pulse's show from last year? I really liked it. it was, I was like what they do. Like, what is that? Yeah, it was, I think it was called the Uninvited. Mm-hmm. And basically my draw on it was it was there was like poltergeist and there's this family on the floor and they were being haunted or tormented and stuff by these uninvited quotation people. Mm. But I think that they do a good job of portraying their show designs and getting the crowd to understand what they're going for. Like I don't, I don't finish watching their shows and wonder to myself, what was that about really? Or I don't, I didn't really get that. Like sometimes I'll do with an RCC show because sometimes RCC gets super artistic and and abstract abstract. And and I'm like, I don't really know what that was about. They played and moved well, but I'm not really sure what that was about. I mean, sometimes it's all it takes though. Sometimes it's all it takes is an idea that's not really super concrete and you just play and move your butt off and you win. Yeah. It's happened multiple times throughout the years. Um, Speaking of RCC, what did uh, the pink man, pink it looked good on the floor i don't doubt it wouldn't have been my favorite uniform to wear as a performer but i feel like it's funny because rcc is so married with the blue devils percussion program and bd that's just a random little thing i laughed to myself about just bd was pink and then rcc the winter before that summer was all pink with their uniforms and you know what their show was called rcc yeah i can't remember it was about flowers we did not do our homework well enough it's all right i don't remember show titles very well so. I rarely pay attention to them. I don't. I probably couldn't tell you. MCM show last year was a Hand of Man. I think. I think that's what it was. Um, or Scouts this past summer, basically. <laughs> and then uh, Rhythm X's show was I don't know Rhythm X through the years or something. <laughs> I don't know what the name of that one is. And Throwback. I, yeah, I thro- don't know. Was was it that? It might have been. That was a joke, but <laughs> I don't know. It was basically they, a Rhythm X homage. They paid homage show. to, or homage, homage, same thing? Yeah. I don't know. Tribute. To a bunch of old past Rhythm X shows. And Which I not, thought I liked as a Rhythm X uh, alumni, biased, but though, in that regard. sitting there watching it, I could easily see how someone would be like, well, I don't understand all this, because there's so many little just behind-the-scenes things from Rhythm X shows thrown in there that if you're a super fan, you would catch. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was like, man, I don't really know what's going on here. Yeah, what the point is, or if I'm a judge, how, I, I wouldn't expect a judge to know all these things. It's like Rhythm X no, and not this and that. 
And it, as we saw in the scores, it, it didn't really play out for them as well as... It was the lowest scoring year since 07? Or since lowest o- placing? Lowest placing year since 07. Yeah, they got 7th s- in 2007, right? Did they? That was the red card. 6th or 7th. I can't remember. It was 6th or 7th. But that year was a fluke because they went to Europe and partied for two months in the middle of the season and didn't really get better. So... And then they were six this that year. That season was kind of a wash anyway, but they had a blast apparently. Yeah, we're kind of jumping around, but that's all right. So we talked about polls, talked about RCC a little bit. Well, let's, I don't want I don't want to move from RCC yet. Okay, I know we got distracted, but that's fine. Those system blue drums, man. Oh, uh, those snare drums sound like boxes. They yeah, they haven't awful. quite figured out that yet. They do not sound good. I don't doubt with how <laughs> how much of a well oiled machine. I don't doubt with how well how much of a well oiled machine that system blue and like that whole blue devils organization is and i know rcc is pretty they're associated right with the blue devils inc or whatever in yeah some way. it's like somehow i'm sure the people well, who promote and market those are coordinating with the blue devils and the people that play them and all that and figuring out what either they, way they'll figure it out yeah three three years from now those system blue drums are probably going to sound way different i hope so because that's basically what dynasty did they had to change because people are like, these Dynasty drums don't sound good. And then they got with Tom Rarick and people who use them a lot and changed them and adapted them to where now they sound better. Yes, they sound... They Still don't. not pearls, but no, they sound better. But, yeah, it's just those system blue drums, the snare drums especially. They don't project, man. There's no, like, resonance to like it. Like I said, there's boxes. The heads, like sound, the, box. the heads sound dead on them. And it worked well for BD because you have, like, an on-field judge out there. Reading They're everything. They're super crisp. They're very crisp, They're super but crisp. they did not project well. Um, well and especially think... for indoor, the judges aren't, aren't out on the floor, obviously. They're just sitting in the stands adjudicating. So I feel like that could damage like things if you can't hear, th- hear it cut through the front ensemble or it doesn't project. But also, at the same time, it's indoor, so you don't have to worry about cutting through a horn line. That's true. That's but, true. But... Yeah, I thought RCC played well, though. I don't think RCC played as well as Pulse. Like, I think Pulse might have been, like, the cleanest drum line. I would agree with, I could agree with that. I think they had the most consistent level of clarity and the highest level. Also, I think they had they definitely less. the highest level of clarity mixed in with demand of music required. So the beats were hard. Yeah. And they definitely checked mark both, the, both those boxes. Because RCC's quads did play some crazy stuff, but they hit a lot of rims. Yeah, I actually watched a video about 45 minutes before you got here, and they played a quad feature, a little little snippet of music, and I was just like, there were like six rims in that. And now, our friend of ours, Dean Hickman, who was a Blue Devils quad drummer, he he goes, people freak out about rims way more than they should. And I was like, well, I don't really... As a snare drummer, I'm like, I don't want to hear the rims, but I don't play quads. So I get how you can only really push yourself to play the hardest stuff by seeing what you can do but at the same time it's like well i don't want to hear the rims <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll get him on here and have him talk about that more because i i'd like to have him sell me on that on that uh further because i wasn't sold initially when he was like yeah people freak out about rims i was like isn't that the, like you don't want to hit i've always heard like that's one way obviously roll clarity of the notes you're playing is important but people are always like oh there's so many rims in that feature so i've always used that as a a way to critique how good a quad line is if I hear more or less rims in a feature or any any of their music. Well, and I think this was actually, so this is not a for sure quote, but I'm pretty sure it was Scott Johnson that said on a judges tape for an indoor group that I was in at one point that, and I'm pretty sure it was him, but I'm not 100%, so I'm just restating that, that if he hears rims, if he hears dirt in a quad line, he knows they're just not playing it together. But if he hears rims in a quad line, he knows individuals just can't play the part. And so I was like, well, that makes sense to me. I mean, that does make sense. So no matter who really is. That was kind of the way I thought of it for a long time. But I don't know. Things have evolved. Things have changed. I'd have to get more of a, a reasoning behind his statement. Because I remember him saying that as well. Dean saying that. Like, yeah, yeah rims aren't that big a deal. Yeah, well, whatever. All right. So let's let's talk about one of the new kids on the block, Broken City. Yeah, man. They, second, third year? Th- this is their third year in existence, I think. Coming up or last last so, year? So they was, finished second place. Yes, but last year was their third year in existence. That's crazy. I mean, Monarch's kind of done the same thing. 
Yeah. And we'll talk about them later too, but for a little bit. I mean, bit the least, Broken but... City thing, it's kind of crazy that they've come up so fast, but then when you look at the people running it, it's also not when you think about Mike Jackson and oh, Roger the great Carter. Minds behind it. And those guys that just know, they've been around the activity. Mike Jackson worked with RCC for a while, didn't he? A long time. Yeah. So, I mean, it's not like he's just some new kid on the block coming out of nowhere and just like, oh, I'm going to figure this activity out. He, he knows the activity. Now, it's it's almost like watching Blue Knights Indoor, but there actually is a Blue Knights Indoor still, right? They still exist? There is a Blue Knights Indoor, but... But I mean, like, the current iteration of the Blue Knights Drum Corps is almost like this is their indoor group. I mean, the staff is all a lot of the same guys, and the writing style is very similar. The approach to the drum is very similar. Um, Are you talking about Broken City? Yeah. Yeah, Broken it's City played... Indoor is the Blue Knights Drum and Bugle Corps staff, but not the indoor percussion, which yes. is kind of funny. But... It makes sense because indoor is so much more geographically based. You teach and participate generally in the groups that are close to you. Yeah, because you have to travel every single weekend, obviously. Yeah. Um, they and I, we talked about it when we talked about the Blue Knights this past summer. They perform their butts off in the sense that there's a lot of extraneous extra motion, when which they play. I think is necessary for indoor. Agreed. I think indoor is where it came from. Yeah, like, as we've seen it happen move its way to, to DCI, it definitely started indoor. I get it. But again, Pulse played cleaner. I mean, I think Pulse was cleaner in Broken City. And I think yes, the fact that Broken City has... Like, Pulse performs well, too. Like, they have a lot of body movement, and they get into what they're playing, even if it's not, like, choreographed body. Blue... Or, not Blue Knights, Jesus. Uh, <laughs> Easily confused. Broken City. Yeah, Broken City just was the next level of that. I think it, I swear I said it before. I think it affects the level of clarity you can achieve. That's really a reasonable do. it's a reasonable argument. The activity is too atten- detail oriented like and it's you're throwing all these extra parameters and elements into what you're trying to do. It's One good. thing that I do appreciate and I know we talked about this beforehand that Broken City does so well is when they're designing their shows it's just like one stream of conscious thing from start to stop. You don't really get the opener, ballad, closer type deal. And most groups do a pretty good job of have eliminated that over the years too. But I, when I watch there, I'm just like feel like I, I start it and then it gets to the end. I'm like, man, that was sweet. Mm-hmm. Just it was one whole thing. It was one thought from beginning to end. Very cohesive. Very very cohesive. And they also do. I think his battery writing is very cool, for, much more, I think appreciated for me for indoor. Because it's so rhythmic and musical. Sometimes in the outdoor, I'm just like, all right, I, I just want you to play cool stuff now. So <laughs> just relax on the syncopated def- rhythms. Just play cool stuff. <laughs> they won music. I think they won the music caption. Did they? Yeah. And I didn't look at the so. They played so dynamically and so with, I mean, for lack of a better way to say it, musically. Like their dynamic range was, and the level of clarity they maintained while executing that dynamic range was off the charts. And they played left hand ping shots. How do you how do you not get, <laughs> how do you not get excited for that? I mean, if you watch DCI this summer, they set a new trend. Yeah, everybody's, tons. everybody's playing left hand ping shots now. Isolated too, just like three counts of rest and yeah. right there on count four or whatever the hell count it was. Like it's theirs was pretty impressive too because there was almost no subdivision, or if there was, you couldn't tell that it was going on. And I don't know if they were wearing in ear pieces where somebody had monitors, but I don't recall them having that. But I either know. way, it's still impressive. I was like, that's pretty I cool. watched a lot of video of them earlier to pre- prepare to record this. And there's a cameras right up on the snare line when they're doing that. And no one's dudding. Nobody's like making any kind of sound. I still, it had to be in ear pieces or they're just. They just gods. learned how to visually watch and move with the hands. Because uh, there's a huge prep stroke for it, but. It's pretty. It's pretty sweet. Yeah, and it's it's uh, but it's funny how we we already mentioned earlier how Pulse kind of injected the drag, a rough open stroke rough back into DCI writing. Uh-huh. It's, it's it's WGI is influencing DCI on so many levels from the percussion standpoint. Obviously, I think yeah, I think WGI just is in general. I mean, I think the guard filters over into yeah, we're pleasing the guard audience now. Uh, the guard filters over into DCI as well, and just the abstract design. It almost seems like there's, I won't say more creativity in the indoor circuit, but it's just a different ball game because you're not trying to navigate around the field and all that jazz. 
All right, so kind of jumping around. Who who got fourth? No, fourth was RCC. No, let's talk about MCM. MCM. They the won. Champions. The champions. The I... I will, I will say one thing about Music City Mystique. And obviously, everyone's heard about the alleged rival uh, rivalry between Mystique and X. And it doesn't really exist anymore, I don't think. I don't think so, especially because there's so many new... Well, it used to be, too. It was, it was Rhythm X, Mystique, and RCC. And those were your three groups. And they were the top three groups every, every year. year, year in and out. Now there's like five or six that all compete. Arguably you throw Pulse seven now. in there. And you throw Broken City in there, and Matrix, and... Now Monarch Independent. Yeah. Like, out of nowhere recently. So, it's kind of changed, and that rivalry isn't, or feud, or whatever you want to call it, isn't what it was, I would say, and in I really the think mid back to in late the day, 2000s. That feud was just Rhythm X being dicks <laughs> to Mystique. May, it, I th- <laughs> A I, little I, bit of that. I viewed it as, as Rhythm X being fun, party... Loose guys and Mystique maybe being too Bando. serious about it. Yeah. Super Bando. Yeah, yeah. I but mean, that's just, that's kind of my take so on it. What I was going to say, though, before, I give Mystique credit. When they get a show theme, they sell it. They go for it. It's like, they all like, shave their heads. They bought in 100%. They were all in. And it's very cool from a thematic standpoint. But to me, if you're going to do that, you got to play great. They... Yeah, they gave stuff. They gave a lot of stuff up. I, you know, I wish I had a recap in front of me. And they broke in the lot, which I was like, "Come on, man!" I didn't see that. There was a tenor player. He broke a few times in the lot. I was mm. just like, "Dude, don't do that." That's a shame. But he still's. He's, he's, still, got a, he's gold, the one he's laughing. A, he's a gold medalist. He's got so a gold medal now. So I never, whatever. I never got one. <laughs> me neither. So, more power to him. But I didn't. I didn't think. I think they won on GE. They were the. To me, they were the blue coats of the indoor. They had a really well designed show, and they played well enough to support their well designed show. I mean, their front ensemble was phenomenal. Their front ensemble was always one of the best. And they the did do some cool stuff, like the whole marimba thing moving. I was like, that's pretty yeah. sweet. Yeah, like good for Kudos you guys. For that. Kudos for that. And it was different. I was like, I've never seen anybody do that, which is hard to do these days. Yeah, it's just, you think you've seen it all. Um, but their their battery has always been, they've had very good years. Their batteries had very good years, mm-hmm. but I think. They write they're, they're they rarely, write well for their group. Like it's not thick. Um, it's very they pass the ball around from segment to segment well to where it's easier I feel like easier to clean that because you're not trying to clean full battery all the time, which is something that Rhythm X does. We play full battery parts a lot and it's hard to clean that from a verticality standpoint. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll talk about that more when we get to Matrix. <laughs> yeah. Matrix um, and Rhythm X because they finished back right, yeah, right beside each other. But yeah, I just, I've never, but again, I've said it, I'm not a huge fan of the indoor activity. The whole gimmicky, it's too, I guess, artsy for me. It's getting too... Yeah, because you always were it's, attracted to the militaristic, like, hardcore sport, like, physicality aspect of, like, yes. marching band and drum corps. Yes, and I, I only did indoor because I wanted to get better at drumming. I wanted to be in good drum lines, and I was like, well, this is the only way I can do this. Outside of drum course, I was like, yeah, sure. I had friends doing it, so I went and did it. But it's I find myself watching, and we've mentioned my brother's opinion on the activity a few times in, on this thing, I think, and as a, as a as an outsider, if, nor, if, if normal everyday people walk past the WGI lot, they're going to look at it and go, what the heck are these guys doing? Dressed like Power Rangers and <laughs> skin tight spandex, and especially if they walked past like a Dartmouth lot because they oh, go man. all out too. They, they like, go dress hard. like flowers or Mozart or roller coasters. They or go something. hard. <laughs> but another great speaking program. of Dartmouth, dude. We haven't really talked a lot about high school. We we'll have to, to. We'll have to throw that into. We'll end with that. We'll end with that. Yeah. Um, we only got a couple more groups in the independent side to go over. Um, so yeah, Mystique, great design, well designed show, played well enough, but not the best. Yes, in our opinion, I think their show design carried them for sure. Yeah, um, I think, and that might be something you could say about past years when they've won. I think the Montreal year in eleven, they were really clean that but year. But the book was really easy. It was just fast. 
It was really easy. It was real fast, and it was easy. It was really easy. Just stupid. And I'm not saying Rhythm X should have beaten them that year, because our show was not well designed that year. There were moments of that. Was that 11? Stand by me. There were moments of that show that were good. There were segments that were good. I'm not saying we should have beat them. They should have beat us. No. But I... They they get they and I'm not faulting them for it. They're great. Show they designers. went all in for that march around did, barefoot man. and stuff. Whew. God I bless could, them. I, I'm too flat footed. I could never have done that. Um, <laughs> I really couldn't have. My feet are really I have really messed up feet. But uh, so moving on to which we've talked about the top F- four. RCC was four. Let's go to Matrix. Let's go to Matrix. Fifth was Matrix. So Matrix is this the first time they've ever beaten Rhythm X at finals? No, they beat them in 07. So the other year well, they Rhythm X. Okay. In recent history, this is the only time Matrix has beaten... In the last 10 years, yeah. Yes. So, do we agree with that? We'll kind of talk about X and Matrix at the same time. No. Was, I mean... You don't think they should have beat them? No. Trying to be as unbiased as I can, obviously, we have a underlying bias for Rhythm X. But trying to be unbiased, I would say no. I think... Why is that? Or why? Well, I guess, why do you think that... I don't think they Actually, played better, and I don't think that they moved better. So you think it was a show design thing then? And Matrix is another group that rides on show design. They, yeah, they are, they are the. I will say that neither. I don't think either of them had what I would call great show designs, but I understood Matrix as more as a general spectator. I've always seen Matrix as the group that plays well enough to be in the upper echelon of the activity. Ne- never plays the best, but. They, they they're the hype train. They perform, man. They go That's for what it. I mean. It's like all energy, like they raw can, energy. It's almost like they hype it so much when they're playing that it might make people that aren't super that don't have super well trained ears get think, into it. Think they're playing great. Yeah. When they're not really. It's like the old school BD effect. Like put on the sunglasses and act like a badass, and you are. And even if it's not perfect, yeah. people are going to be like, "Oh my god, those guys are phenomenal." Yeah. And. And so I think they they're they almost ride the hype train more than Mystique does. I think like the year what was the year they had the paint cans? That was three years ago. When they I don't poured remember. paint on, on that the was tenor cool, players. Though. It was cool. The GE was great. Um, uncovered or covered up year. Whatever I think it was, it was called covered but, up. Um, they poured they poured cans of paint on the quad players during a feature of Yeah. And the snare line. But it was cool and it worked and it was great GE. But do you think that's on purpose? I mean I, that's a bad way to phrase that. Do you think... Cause obviously, uh, yeah, I think they designed it on purpose. That's what I mean. <laughs> that's why I said it was a bad way to phrase that. Do you think they understand, because of the area they're in, and how close to other groups that might steal top talent from staying there? Although Matrix is kind of like a cult. Looks, <laughs> once they, you're in, you're in for life. They buy in to the, the philosophies um, of teaching there. That's for sure. Once you're in, you're in for life. Uh, but it's... <laughs> They feel like they have to design such GE heavy shows to make up for the fact they know they're might probably not going to play as well as the other top groups to well, try to I'll compete. S- I'll say this: anybody who doesn't design to max out GE I know is a low, stupid. I know, but, but I, I I get what you're saying that they play to their strengths. I yes, guess. that's my point. Yeah, and their strengths are high energy. They they move. They play fast. They play. They'll play a lot of notes, like heavy duple to paradiddle stuff, and it's cool. They do they do a good job, but I just I don't think they should have beaten Rhythm X. That's basically it. I think from a playing standpoint alone, regardless of shows, I think Rhythm X played enough better than them that they should have won. But and they just moved better. Yes, Rhythm X moved pretty well this year. I thought uh, on the floor. Um, and Tim Fairbanks always writes really good drill. No matter what the show design is, like his drills, I like it because I'm a math person. His drill is very mathematically pleasing. Yeah. And symmetrical. It's very aesthetically pleasing. Like when you watch with the uniform, I mean, it's very similar to the gone year where you turn back field and you disappear into the tarp, the whole red, white color scheme. It just looked pretty. Yeah. And And I was like, this is pleasing. Even though the show, I was like, okay, whatever the concept, but it just looked good. I mean, there, there's something to that. I mean, my, my undergraduate thesis for my math degree was on, I analyzed symmetry in marching drill. And it turned out that I found that I developed like a, a function, basically, that analyzed the level of symmetry and gave a rating to a segment of marching drill. And I showed it to a bunch of people involved and not involved in the activity. And it turned out there was a correlation. Shows with higher levels of symmetry in the drill 
correlated to a higher score for my function and people liked it more. That's because it's easy to read and it's easy to process from like a mental standpoint. Like when you see it on the floor, your eye understands exactly what it's supposed to be. And when you achieve what the intent is, it's just like satisfying. It makes you feel all warm and fuzzy. Like, mm, that was nice. Exactly. It's, it's, humans are attracted to symmetry. I mean, they've done studies that the he, people, people, people's faces that are more symmetrical, left, left side to right side, are more attractive. Or can, yeah, yeah. It's just, as people, we just like symmetry. And uh, Tim Fairbanks has, I think, mastered that in in the uh, in the marching arts at this point. He's very good at it. Very good at what he does. Yes, he is. All right. So the last independent group we'll talk about is another one of these new com- new kids on the block. Is Monarch Independent out of Texas? And I think it makes perfect sense that there would be a good indoor group in Texas because there's no indoor around there. And Texas is a great marching band state. Dude, they have so many high quality high schools that not only are just good BOA bands, but just have solid high school drummers and percussionists and front ensemble players. Like they do that Dripping Springs like outdoor drumline contest where they basically just set up and play the percussion only and get judged on it. And these kids just throw down. Yeah, it makes perfect sense that somebody finally got the initiative and the funding and the organization uh, and like together the staff. to to start a group in Texas because the talent was always there. The talent was always there. Yeah, so Monarch came in. They were in open class last year, right? I believe. Was this their first in World? I think it was their first year in World. This um, is their third year. They started the same year that Broken City did. <clears throat> but Broken okay. City started in World. Okay. Monarch started in Open. So... Their first year in World, and I knew that they had done well in Open Class, and I saw their show from Open Class. I was like, yeah, man, these kids are playing well. Good for them. And then I saw them, they bumped up to World. I was like, oh, okay, that's bold. But then I saw them They got like 11th, I think, two years ago, the first year in World. I don't know. And then, whatever. Anyway, but then I saw them, and I was just like, well, all right. Yeah, they play well. And I'm going to note, they only lost to Rhythm X by point one. Yeah, it was close. And I don't think I agree with that. But they died. I I had not seen them until this morning before we started recording this. I had not, not checked them out. Um, they're great. They're, they deserve to be where they are. They're one of the... They had a moment that stuck out. That I still remember watching it. I watched it on the, the live stream. Um, and they had that gut roll. It was just so low... And it was just so clear, and I, I can still remember it. And that's what you want. That's the groups that have moments that stand out. You're like, I remember that happening in that show. And I was just like, man, they just nailed that. Good for you. Yeah, yeah 100%. Uh, who, I know a guy that I marched with at Blue Coast, Taha Ahmed, I think he's either the battery coordinator or one of the or the snare tech there. I know he was there, helped start it, and Taha's a super smart guy, super great. I don't know anybody else that teaches there. I I know when I listen to their book, I'm like, this sounds like Mike Jackson wrote it. We were saying earlier, it would would make sense if we found out that he either wrote the book, because Taha is one of Mike's snare techs at Blue Nights during the summer right now. Okay. So it would make perfect sense if Mike did write their book, or someone that's learned from Mike for a long time. It sounds very similar. Um, Very flowy, fluid, dynamic, really broad spectrum of dynamic contrast. Yep. Um. So they, deserve, they definitely deserve to be They were mix. eighth, right? I, I seventh. Seventh. Because X was sixth, and yeah. they got eighth. Um, who was ninth? Well, the run, eighth, run down, it, after Monarch, it was United Percussion, Infinity, Strike, Pulse, Open World, POW, Cap City. Is it saying POW? What, what are you? POW Percussion. POW. POW. Are you, are you saying POW? POW? I don't... Just something about your face. <laughs> well, shout out to the stepbrothers there. Atlanta Quest. Redline, George Mason University, which... I want to talk about a couple of those groups real quick. Yeah. First off, United. That is probably one of the most up-and-down groups. <laughs> They've been around since I got involved in 2010. Um, they have good years, and then they'll have years where they finish seven places lower than the year before. I don't know if it's a show design thing. Their show design's always hit or miss, because I feel like there's not... The Northeast isn't super strong in, like, I will say the indoor high school scene either. So I feel like... Outside of Dartmouth. Outside of Dartmouth, yeah. Tom Monk's like... There's some good groups up there, but I feel like not as many. Especially when you're considering like California, Texas. I mean, California is definitely the hotbed for indoor drumline. 
But yeah, I agree. United, they have great years, and then they have years where you're like, they're, they're not as memorable. Now let's talk about George Mason for a second, because our boy, Travis Peterman, has been working with Crown as like the co-caption head, I think. Right under Tom Hannum. Like yeah. The next in command under Tom Hannum. Yeah. Um, he's marrying the two. And what I mean by that is the audition packets for George Mason and Carolina Crown for this season are identical. Um, Makes sense. Uh, yeah. It's like, oh, he's good. I guarantee he's going to get dudes that marched Crown for him that, in that great drum line. Go march George Mason. That's a group I think you're going to see slowly. Work Guess what? They can the already way. play all the exercises really well because they did it all summer. <laughs> <laughs> so just check that one off the list. Yep. Save a lot of time there. Um, um, yeah, I think George Mason is going to be one you're going to start seeing because it's it's the same guys from Crown. Travis, Dan Shack's working with them, I think. Um, just all those same techs and that those all East Coast guys, you know, are all are all there. You're going to see it. Start. East Coast <laughs> uh, inside jokes. Um, and then Red Line down there. I feel like the. That's another group that's had a lot of ups and downs. North Coast folded, right? Yes. North, the Red Line, I think, is going to have a better year this year than last North year. North Coast folded. North. And is it Genesis up there? There's like, there's three, there were three world groups, I in believe, Michigan. in Michigan. That's which oversaturation. Which is too many for the size state that Michigan has. I think the only other state that has more than three, or three at least, is California. Yeah. And they actually have the talent to support and that. California has a population higher than Canada. Yeah. <laughs> basically yeah pretty much not basically they do yeah literally so literally so i think that's really going to help redline and those groups i think were all very close geographically like within an hour and a half of each other so you had three independent world groups basically stealing talent from each other in a state that's not exactly a hotbed of percussive like talent like widespread yeah so i think it's going to bolster their talent level and give them a better opportunity to uh do some cool stuff and play better and Definitely, there. I don't know why they. I don't know if there was like staff differences and way of thinking about it. I don't know why those groups didn't merge into one super Michigan group a long time ago. Uh, I think not only staff differences, but maybe just like egos, personal friendship differences, <laughs> in some of that. Yeah, stuff. I've been in touch with some people involved with Redline over the past few months, and people that are on staff there and work with the group, and uh, I think they're going to have a pretty decent year this year, just from. For no other reason than they're going to get all the best talent from North Coast. Yeah. So you're going to basically merge the two groups. And I think it's going to be good for them, too. Um, I think that's it. Yeah, I that's kind of our recap of last season. And- um, it's kind of hard to see how anything's going to play out this season. Just because I don't think audition- it... Auditions just ended. Just ended. No one's real really started rehearsing. I'm for sure don't think I've seen anything about show announcements or show designs. That stuff usually comes out later. Who knows what groups have what vets, what vets decided to come back and didn't come back. I do want to bring something up real quick before I forget. This is, I want to switch gears real fast and talk about something related to drum corps really quick. Okay. Before we get into high school indoor for to close this thing out. Uh, Different drum corps have started announcing their percussion staffs for the season. But there is one group that has not said a thing yet, and auditions are a month from now. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I, as an alum, I'm, I, I'm, I follow the Blue Coats Facebook page, all that stuff. I don't follow anything, except I their have, Snapchat. I have not seen <laughs> any staff announcement on percussion staff yet from the Blue Coats. I have not seen anything or heard of anything uh, either. I've seen, uh, I don't think, and that's not, doesn't mean anything. This is all hypothetical speculation. It doesn't I don't, mean anything. I don't think I've seen Crown's announcement yet. Has Crown announced the same staff? I know they're all back for a fact. So you heard it here first if they haven't announced. I'm pretty positive it's more or less the same staff for the company. I've season. seen a lot of announcements for other staffs like Crossman and Madison Scouts announced Phantom theirs. Guard staff and such and such guard staff. And, and I've never really paid. Madison Scouts I've announced really their paid, percussion staff again. I've never really paid close attention to when groups do that. Because I've been aged out for a while, and it's not really mattered to me who was teaching where anymore. But I guess it kind of has stuck out. Um, yeah, scouts aren't changing a thing, which is a little surprising. Yeah, it's a little surprising that they haven't made any changes anywhere. But we'll see what happens. Yeah, the blue coats have not announced yet. Could mean nothing. Could mean there's some changes coming. And I honestly, 100%, know nothing. Yeah, I have not heard anything about anybody from anyone about anything. It could just mean they're waiting a week. A week I do now. know of one person that I don't think is coming back to teach, but it's not like, uh, 
like a leader person, like a head person. It's not like a caption head or anything. Right. We no. won't say it here. No, nah, we'll, I'm not going to we'll out let, anybody. No, no, no. We'll we'll let that because I don't know out. if he's announced it yet yeah, either. And I'm not, not going to do has. that. <laughs> so we'll we'll leave that alone. Um, so that was just something I wanted to throw out there as a hmm, yeah. I wonder what's happening there. I don't know. Hopefully, some changes. We'll see. Just we'll see to help Time. them Time execute at a higher level. Time will tell. So let's. Go back to indoor. Yeah, close this out with some Let's high school. Let's talk about some high school Which indoor. is, I think, where all the trends are set in both winter guard and winter percussion. I think that you see the most creative shows done at the high school level, um, partially because some of those programs have more money to work with because they have like booster programs and things like that, and they can they fundraise a lot better, and they have their own equipment for their high school that they already use. So when you think about groups like Chino Hills, Ayala, Arcadia, Dartmouth, whoever else is up there in the top upper echelon of high school percussion, those groups I feel like do the most creative shows and sometimes just play cleaner because they practice more than just the weekend. They can practice during the week. When I look at Chino Hills and how well they can play from the beginning to the end of their show, I'm like, this is insane. You guys should compete in the independent world. <laughs> I think they would have they well. made finals. Oh, they would have. They and would. I saw that. I mean, I watched Chino Hills. Like, I keep up with their like fall percussion stuff because it's interesting. Their mm-hmm. Facebook page. They have like seven snares, like four or five quads, and they're just like throwing down. I'm like, get out of here. They've they've built an animal at that school. But you know what's funny? Like that high school. That's the thing. Yeah. Like band and bait or band and uh, basketball. Yeah. Like there's football is not a thing at that no. school. Like other sports to old matter. Like band is cool. And like, like the drumline stuff is cool out there. Somehow they've just created a culture because Chino Hills, Arcadia, and Ayala, which are three of the best, if not the best, the, I, they may have finished one, two, three last year. High school percussion programs in the country all are within like an hour's drive or less of each other. And you got to think the fact that it, it culturally at that in that school system or at that specific school that being in the drumline is cool is possibly going to attract some more of your athletic kids that yeah. would normally play a sport, but they're going to be like, well, this is awesome. I'm going to learn to drum, and they're already naturally athletic people. Well, my friend Joe, who teaches out at Clovis West or Clovis High, he just changed jobs, so I'm not exactly sure, Joe Avery, but he was at one of the Clovis schools, and now was at another Clovis school. But he said those kids at Ayala, he's like, man, they just get super into it. They like all do like P90X together and like are in super really – good shape and that matters man. when you watch their visual demand of their programs you're like well that makes sense because they do stuff they have control it's just like all right i want to do it i want to do it i want to do that experiment with a drum core drum line or even an indoor line and i, I want to do it yeah i, I watched a video of Ayala's fall group and their the drill they're doing for their high school drum line it looks like stuff i did in drum core i'm like geez that is aggressive <laughs> it's cool it's but, cool to see yeah, I think I, that the high school indoor scene is where it's at. I love watching the high school way more than I love watching the independent. I, I do too. I get more excited watching high school kids achieve at a high level than I do college kids. Yes. Because it's just that much more impressive. That yeah. They're that young and they can achieve at that level. They've bought in, man. You know, because you know at that point, they that's when they're really digging in to put in the hours of practicing an individual practice because that's what I did. Yep. I mean, yeah, I didn't have an outlet like a Chino Hills or a high school. We were good, but that was just... We weren't on that level. Yeah, we weren't. No, no, no. <laughs> Not even close. Not even close. But it's just crazy to think of, like, I see those kids, I'm like, how much hours are you spending playing drums right now instead of video games? And that's awesome. Yeah, it's great. It's phenomenal to see. It gets me excited. And uh, I think I've talked to you about this, is, is there's been... I've thrown the idea around with uh, one of the guys, a couple of the guys I teach with at the high school I work with here in Louisville about starting like a, because there's like a tri-state, small Kentucky, Southern Indiana circuit Mm -hmm. for indoor for high schools, but no one's really that good, if I'm being honest. No. And so... Not on a, not when you think of it in relation to other stuff in the country and definitely th- there's not. there's a lot of there's like 20 something public high schools in louisville that's a lot so what we yeah you separate the talent big time uh doing that but we, we we've been talking about possibly trying to get with either the, the jefferson county which is the county the city's in and starting like a jefferson county scholastic yep 
drumline, and that way kids from any of the public high schools in the county yeah. can come audition. And then we can pick the cream of the crop, uh, like the best two kids from every school, and have a good scholastic group potentially. That's just, it's all up in the air whether when we're going to do that or if it's even possible. Or That'd be a really cool idea. It uh, Fayette County would require, quite a, thing. would require quite a coordination, but yeah. Fayette County could do it in Lexington too. They did at one point, I think. Have uh, like a Fayette like County indoor drumline. They drum did line. one season. And it did okay, but it just also wasn't run super well. Exactly. Now we have <laughs> we have enough minds in this city, and even if we grab some guys from Lexington an hour away to teach it. I did talk to Jared this weekend, so that's right, Jared just, Andrews. Yeah, I just inter- I was like, hey man, little known fact. We know, like we he knows my like we know each other from like Facebook and like have similar backgrounds from like people we studied with. And if you don't know who Jared from. Andrews is, he's been running the Blue Devils and RCC's like battery as the coordinator for a long time. Like the past four or five Won years. so many rings, so many drum trophies. Like, But he's from Kentucky, he, and he's back. Little known I was fact. like, dude, how's uh, how's being back in uh, Kentucky? He's like, it's cold, bro. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> yes, it I is. I have to wear sleeves. Yes, it is. Uh, yeah, so he's back. So we, we're trying. There's the, there's the right people in place with the right knowledge and experience, I think between these two cities to either do one in Fayette County or do one in Jefferson County yeah, and have the right minds to possibly be successful. But that's neither here nor there. That's just a little off the cuff little thing that we were talking about doing. So, but I don't, I guess moving forward, we'll start to get into more. Once we get more information from indoor, we'll do a, we'll just like super early preseason, like prediction type thing. We're going to reach out to people we know working with the various top groups and find out how many vets do you guys have? What's, Try to See get some can, inside scoop and, here. And we won't reveal show details before. If we can get them to tell us any of that, we're obviously not going to say it here until they've announced it, and we're not going to give any of that out there. We're not going to blow That's, anybody up. Exactly. But we'll we'll get some details on... I'm sure we can find out how many vets in each section the various groups had. and How it's looking, shaken out. And yeah, stuff. What, what the audition process has, has been like so far. So we'll, we'll do a lot of that, and we'll um, report back here in a couple weeks. Um, we're still going to stick to the every two weeks at this point. Once the competitive WGI season starts, we'll try to go back to one a week like yeah, we did during the DCI season volume. because, again, we don't want to beat a dead horse. There's not quite enough competitively to talk about yet, so we'll stick to t- every two every two weeks. Um, try to hook up with some guys to sit down with. Speaking of that, uh, we Andrew Kane was our previous guest. Obviously, he was the center quad player for Tom Monks this summer. Uh, we got a tentative... I'd yeah, like to sit yeah. down with you from it was, Tom Monks. It's basically Tom um, saying, "Oh yeah, this is cool. Like, I'd love like, to talk to you guys, but so we don't know how serious. We're probably it was. gonna have to figure that out. The only way on our could, own because he's definitely not gonna go out come of his to way. Kentucky. Yeah, no, 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 not at all. <laughs> uh, the best chance it would have is because uh, I marched for him obviously for a summer, and so he at least knows who I am, uh, and then he knows Andrew very well. And yeah. even if we had him and Andrew on at the same time, that'd be cool. I'd be fine with that." Best bet will probably be WGI when he's in Dayton because we'll be up there for sure if we can steal him for an hour one evening or something. Maybe he'll be pretty busy, I'm sure. Yeah, with Dartmouth. Yeah, but we'll fi- we'll try to figure all that out. All right, but yeah, as always, thanks for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. Follow us on follow and like us on Facebook at facebook.com/slash Aged Out Podcast. Uh, again, any questions you might have that you want us to answer, post on the Facebook page. You can uh, email, email us, agedoutpodcast at gmail.com. Uh, follow us on Instagram for all the new episode announcements and random cool photos and videos we take at uh, various shows we're going to continue to go to. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, we'll see you guys in two weeks. Peace.